Good afternoon, everyone. Yoko here, and welcome to round five of the Go Mode Podcast Mentor Tournament. Today we have Zero Nix versus Gilo. So, and I am joined by Ad- Ador? Adler. Adler. Close enough. <laughs> Hello. Um, yeah, we are looking at our week five match here. It's, a, it's our 2 2 in the Swiss brackets versus uh, Zero Nix and Lijo. Should be getting here, going there momentarily. Um, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. So this is a open race today with uh, Gilo having oh. And we are off. There's a moon start. pearl in the uh, house. Yep, what a we... great item to have for the literally the first check of the game. Right. So you see both of them doing the uncle uncle start here so what do you think what item do you think we're gonna have to see from uncle i don't know i think with such a fantastic item off the start i uh i, I wouldn't be surprised to see anything more than a couple of red rupees in the uncle secret here now if this was standard of course we would get a weapon off of him but since we're in open mode this could be pretty much anything in the item pool yeah, so a heart from Uncle, and from the Vanilla Lamp chest, we see 300 rupees. Yep, nothing special either there. Full heart is nice, 300 rupees also nice. That's a good chunk of the money we'll need for the rest of the game. Right. So, Jilo uh, saving and quitting, this time starting from the Sanctuary. 50 rupees. Always good to get that or early uh, Zora and Bottle Vendor money out of the way. Indeed it is. We're about about halfway to all the uh, potential rupees we could need to pay for everything in the game. So... Gilo making it into the Lost Woods, followed by uh, Zero Nix, and we have 300 rupees in the mushroom spot. Another 300, yeah, that's uh, pretty much set for money. They'll they'll pick up the rest of it incidentally. They don't even have to try to get any uh, any more money. They'll be pretty well set. Right, and a piece of heart at the. Leave you opting for a save and quit out of the uh, woods hideout drop. I wonder if maybe you'll head for the uh, dam and mini moldorm while Zero Nix looks will probably continue to the village. Yep. And just the bottle vendor and getting lucky on the bomb purchase there, so that uh, that works out for you to have bombs for the uh, well and blind side out. Right. So as Zero Nix makes their way into the well, Jilo making a quick check of the race game. We've got our first bottle in the back of the well and a glove and a piece of heart. And another full heart. So that puts sick kid into logic now. Yeah, it's really nice when you get a glove in Kakariko because you can immediately get that sick kid checked on and not have to worry about coming back for it later. Right.
And there's our first sword. And a hammer! A nice pair of weapons in Blind's Hut, and uh, that's that's Dark World Axis already. Along with that book, that uh, that gives us a, suddenly a lot to do. Yes. Other than the, uh, than the three bombs on Bottle Vendor, they haven't really had any bomb pickups yet, so you see them having both gone to the Cat Breaker shop to uh, spend 50 of all those rupees they got to pick up 10 bombs, which will be really useful for the early game. Yep. So right now we're just crossing each other's paths. So as, as we're doing that, uh, what kind of seed do you think we're going to have? With these runners, I mean, with this, with this, uh, this item set up for as early as we are, I think we could be looking at quite a lot of divergence, honestly. Um, with it, with this much access opened up so early that we've got, uh, well, there's Bolus Eastern. You've got desert access with the book. Uh, you could see a dip right into Dark World and go straight to Thieves Town. Check the front of Skull Woods. Maybe even a play over to pod. There's a lot of options. Right. And more bombs on top of the library and arrows from Sick Kid. And we haven't seen a map check yet from both of our runners. Yeah, it'll be really interesting. Inter sorry, interesting to see how our dungeon prizes are laid out, considering this very early Dark World access. Jolo checking out the back of Escape bombs, rupees, and a key. The key being back there tells us that that was indeed required to drop in with the glove, but unfortunately having no progression. So the rest of castle was will be a little more likely to contain uh, useful items. Right. And we are getting a south shore check. Both players opting to skip the dam. And I'd imagine at least one of them might be thinking that they'll combine the dam check with then going uh, west and straight into desert. And there's our map check. We have blue crystals on all three of our light world dungeons. And there's powder. That was almost a mini Moldorm cave, completely full of money, but that last chest redeemed it for at least having something useful. That's a bit... Moldorm was stashing away money today. And we do apologize if you guys aren't hearing any sound on your end, or if it's uh, a little off... We are still trying to also, we are having a little bit of a technical difficulty with getting everything to run properly. So please bear with us as well. We have both of our runners opting to make the walk to Ice Rod Cave. And I'm guessing they're both feeling they, like they're still looking for a little bit more from this early uh, light roll progression. And nothing more than just a big 20. And I... 
So now I'm thinking our options, they could, we're, we're likely to see either a, a trip to desert, perhaps into the, uh, through the mountain, it'll be a dark trip to the, through the mountain ascent cave, but we could see that, or perhaps a dip into or, uh, Skull Woods and Thieves Town area. Right. Looks like Legio is actually going to set up a fake flipper here. Yep. And yep. we will see how many checks he goes for. And he's going to be making his way up to Hobo, looks like. We've got a, P a full heart container on the island. And Zero Nick's also getting a quick uh, not check in as well. And Zero Nix going into the Dark World. So this is going to be our first time in this seed in the Dark World. We have the... And let's see. We have Swamp, Mire, and Thieves Town as our crystals. Uh, Swamp being the green crystal. And I missed our 5-6 crystal on that the one. The red crystals were in Ice and Turtle Rock. Yeah, we've been getting a lot of that lately, like uh, TR being uh, Red Crystal. Hype Cave check, we got a bug net, another bottle, bombs, and money. I give that Hype Cave, I give Hype Cave a three out of five. I was willing to give it a one and a half. The bottle is a, the only real redeeming factor there, and it's not much redemption. So Legio found a pack of bombs at Hobo. It's nothing doing there. Got the uh, the jump off the ledge to the the, the reef egg, as I like to call it. And we're going to see a check into Waterfall Cave, which is, of course, enabled by the fact that we do have the Moon Pearl, which makes that possible. <laughs> Chad's saying a 0 0.5 out of 10. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, you can be as generous as you want with that. I'm thinking that's fair. It wasn't very good. So Waterfall Cave not having much for us there, and we will undoubtedly see a peek at the Zora Ledge and a check of King Zora himself. And a pyramid check, too. Pyramid to pyramid having the lamp. Xeranix finding that lamp and finding some progression as well. The lamp being not only a fire source, but very convenient for navigating the multiple dark rooms that they'll have to deal with. Um, we are looking at uh, Turtle Rock having that one prominent dark room in, in the uh, latter part of the dungeon. Right, and also the the couple rooms down in the mire basement. We are getting a uh, catfish check over on Zero Nix's side. And Legio, I believe, will be giving us our first look at the two checks at the dam here. Fire ride from the catfish. That's our other fire source, and that will get us half of our uh, Trinex killing power, as well as full access to the back of Skull Woods. And there's Berna in the dam. That's a fantastic uh, defensive item to have at this point in the game. Yep. And there's our Master Sword. Somebody took that sword and dunked it in the water. Thankfully, we were able to dredge it out. Yep. A lot of we are getting some diver, diversions here. Zero next choosing to go up the mountain, 
while uh, Lee Joe is over in desert. He peeked at the ledge. I didn't quite see what it was, but it looked like it was probably just uh, 10 arrows or something like that. And there's our blue mail. And 20, in a big 20 in Sahar, in Agena's closet. Looks like Zero Nick's opting just to pick up the, uh, the old man item and enable that mountain save and quit point. And then we'll see, looks like a trip into the castle. Yep. Meanwhile, Legio is going to be making this play into the uh, Southern Dark World, probably cleaning up a hype cave and all the stuff that we've already seen from uh, Zeronix's side. So while well, um, that's why well, we have Legio uh, just crossing over everything Zeronix had just completed, please do give these runners a follow. You know they are. Uh, we have Zero Nix and Lee Joe. Please, if you like what you see here, please do give them a follow. And especially their runners, uh, their mentors. Uh, Zero Nix has Koi, and Lee Joe has Walter. Walter Four. Both of these mentors are fantastically knowledgeable people at this game. If you want to uh, learn a lot about Rando. Uh, they are both great people to uh, to keep an eye on. Follow them. Uh, I know Koi also does a number of really helpful YouTube videos. You can check them out. You can learn a lot about this game. Yep. So I want to give a uh, bit of thanks to our uh, rest of our restream, restream crew today. Uh, we've got our two commentators, myself and Yoko. We have our streamer who is uh, Shaki, and then our restreamer, Amareth, who are all working hard. I'm sorry, uh, Vortex. Vortex, Vortex is our, is our yes. restreamer. Um, who is working hard to uh, put on this race today and keep everything running as smooth as possible. So Lejo is heading up to Catfish, going to get that fire rod, and looks like Zero Nix is most likely going to take a our first look into the Village of Outcasts and uh, Skull Woods area. Right. At least if they go into Thieves Town, there's four chests that they can check right up front. So that's always, you know, an easy yeah. quick check. Pen at Thieves Town, a bit of a contentious point. Some people like to. Just check the, the opening for the lobby area. You can get two or th one to three items depending on the layout. Uh, others will, uh, will full dive it depending on what they get, or maybe they just do it all the time. Uh, we'll have to uh, perhaps see what happens here. But it looks like Xeronix is going to head first into, into Skullwoods. Yeah, I mean, we have our fire source. Easy to clear out. And it's a crystal dungeon, so we'll want to get that cleared at some point. As long as he's comfortable with doing the Mothula fight at, with this equipment, we may see just see a, a, a trip straight to the back. And there's two items to pick up here in Skull, in, yeah, in Skull Woods. A 
bit of trouble manipulating the statue around the Gibdos. Doesn't have enough magic to uh, to burn them to get them out of the way, so he's having to do the uh, the tricky dance with them. Ooh, Ooh and takes them there. And G and uh, Lee Joe checking out the Mad Bat, and we have a full heart container. Xerinix did have that fairy bottle, so he's not completely ejected out of the dark world here. Um, got those Gibdos finally get a position where he can drag the statue onto the button and get this big key chest checked. Uh... Just a key in that small chest there, but a full magic refill in that room to the right. So if you ever run out of magic... Always good to know where your magic refills are as well, too. But he does get the full magic refill, and... Picks up the key. And it looks like we are heading on to the back side. To the boss side of Skull Woods. Legio now coming into the Dark World on, and we'll be doing the same uh, route right behind Zero Nix here. Looks like just heading straight to the back without checking the, the first chest in the front. Right. So it looks like we're going to be clearing, the, checking this one from back to front. It's a good play to make if you have the fire rod and you, and you need to clear Skull Woods as is crystal. You start with the back because you might get lucky and get both the items off of Mothula and the bridge chest and not need to worry about the rest of the dungeon. And we are off to our Mothula fight. So this is Fighter Sword Mothula, but we do have the Fire Rod, of course, and there is that blue potion in the pocket. So if they feel like they need to refill, um, do missing some hearts, or wanting to just open up with the Fire Rod, the full magic bar, they do have that option. Right. And we just got to be careful because anytime Mothula goes over those spikes, he does not take damage. that blue potion being used. We'll switch back to the fire rod and likely see probably finished off with enough fire rod shots here. Take one more. Should be close by now. It's all it's usually hard to see know exactly how many hits you've dealt uh, to Mothula, but there we go. And down goes Mothula. Our third bottle on Mothula with another fairy in it. We are getting very quickly stocked up on containers. Right, and Lee Joe did check that uh, chest down there, so kind of missed what was in there. I did not see the bridge chest either, but it looks like we're going to see it from uh, from Zero Nix here. We were so consumed by the fight. <laughs> we were. It's a, a fighter sword Mothal is always... Always good to watch because it can it can get very tense very quickly, especially when you have only uh, only six hearts and the blue armor does no damage no damage reduction of course against the spikes themselves, right. so the fight can get very quickly out of hand. Just a map. They don't have a mirror yet, of course. So they're going to have to walk back out in order to. Um, check the rest of the dungeon. A death morp may have been an option there, but Xeronix decided it was faster to just go ahead and walk back. Right. 
And as we see uh, J-Lo making their way now to the back to fight the big moth. And I guess for a death warp too, you'd also have to abandon that fairy we just got. And Zeronix probably wants to hold on to that. Still six hearts in the uh, in the dark world. I'd like to have that revive in your pocket. Right. Always good to have a uh, safety. does have the Master Sword, which they found in the, uh, the Sunken Treasure. Uh, that'll make this fight a little bit easier, Master Sword being significantly better at fighting Moth than the Fire Sword. Right. And thank you, Emerith, for the raid. <laughs> and Lijo needing to use his fairy. Ledge on zero next side, just 100 rupees, nothing useful there. And down goes Mothalo and lead your side, so. Nice fight there. We make our way into the village of, Adca village of Outcasts. Three chests here on the outside of the village to check. And we start with the, sheesh, the sea house with a piece of heart. Ball and ball hut containing 50 rupees. Second item in Skull Woods finds the key. We'll head over to uh, Pot Prison. I didn't see what our second item in Skull Woods was, but I don't believe there's anything uh, significant. Our red chest game over here on Xeronix's side has our red meringue. A full heart container. It was a full heart, yep, in Pot Prison. There we go. So that's our two items in Skull Woods. Zeronix giving us a Thieves Town dungeon check. First chest, nothing but the big key. Small key in the second chest, so we've got two items at most in the top four here. And the red boomerang at the treasure chest gate. All right, those are compass. So we know this either has this has to be an item or a key, and it's an item. So twenty rupees. So That's three. Three items in the back of Thieves Town, which is, I think, for both these runs, probably going to be good incentive to actually uh, dig back in there and look for some more stuff. Right, and considering that this is also a green pendant, we can also, if they decide to clear it, there's also that additional item from Sahashala as well, too. I think the green pendant is actually on Swamp Palace in this. Oh, place. that's right. Yeah. I miss. It looks like Xeronix is actually just going to walk out of Thieves Town, um, opting to take just the one check up front. The one, the one item being that red ruby. There are, there are still three items left in here somewhere. And they do have the hammer, so it's so the dungeon is full clearable. Instead, they will head down to the uh, 
the South game. Dark World part. We're going to see the date game and then probably proceed over uh, check out Stumpy. Right. Seven digs for a, or eight digs for a pack of bombs there. Not much going on. This is reminding me of a seed I commentated a couple days ago. We were getting nothing but bombs. Alright, time to check Stumpy, and Stumpy just gives us 20 rupees. Meanwhile, Lee Joe going to the back of Thieves Town. I like this play here. Um, again, only having one item in the top four chests means there are three in, in the backside. And it's, it is full clearable because they do have the hammer. Um, Lee Joe has a decent number of hearts and, and Master Sword shouldn't be have any real difficulties with uh, defeating Blind. Mm -hmm. And using the bug net to capture another fairy, so at least now he has another insurance marker in the back of his pocket. Yeah, they do have that luxury of having both the bug net and the powder um, for capturing fairies, which would be great while they don't have as many hearts as, as you'd normally be comfortable with in Dark World. Right. Uh, Legio especially has not yet found that blue armor, uh, which we saw at the old man. They have yet to make a trip up to the mountain. And Zero next picking up his Master Sword. And that's a map in the Thieves Town Attic chest. And yet, last three items are in Blind Cell, the big chest, and on Blind itself. Right. That is our single arrow on the desert ledge, and Xeronix is going to use that book and head into desert. That's right. There's a basically a coin flip that desert is boots flock, so this, there may not be much going on here, but this will still be good information because this is a crystal dungeon. Yes. So let's hope it's let's hope for the sake of this the way the seed's going that it's not boots locked. Cell has just a pack of bombs in it. Lijo will pick the maiden and head over to the big chest. The map chest in desert has a full heart in it, so that's one item of two. And in the big chest, there's our Titan's myth. Our, yeah, Titan's myth. That is another vanilla Titan myth uh, seed here. We've seen a, I've seen a good a couple of these lately. Um, that is. A very good find for Lee Joe. So the back day, full diving thieves town, extremely worth it. Right, Zero Nix uh, choosing to opt out of desert. We do know that he is going to have to make a trip back into desert at some point to pick up his Titan's Myths. Meanwhile, Lee Joe going on to fight blind. Yeah, Xeronix, of course, because they found that the heart in the map chest uh, means that the big key is going to be is going to be on the torch, and the small key will be in the uh, the big the key big chest. chest. So, yeah, that is completely locked up by boots for desert. And a solid blind kill from Lijo. Our last item is the Quake Medallion. We don't know yet if we're going to need that to get into Meyer and TR. Meyer is a pendant, so hopefully we're, we're not too reliant on medallions in this seat, but TR definitely. Yeah. We need at least at oh, least yeah. one of them. Xeronix is giving us our look up on Spectral Rock. On top is a big 20, and inside, just a quarter heart. 
not much doing on not much going on there. And Lee Joe doing the peg cave check has to do it the slow way. And it looks like gives yep. us just a big twenty, yep. And, and zero going into a spike cave. Yeah, they've got that burner, which does make this very much possible. Uh, running themselves on just one heart. They should have just enough magic to get through this. And I think yep. they've still got that fairy just in case. Yes. Yeah. But unfortunately, that's another big 20, so we're still still hunting for progression here. So right now we're looking at we're actually kind of low on options. We've We've seen entirely Skullwoods and Thieves Town. Um, neither runner has taken a dip into the Eastern or Pod areas. I'd imagine they're trying to put that off until they have a mirror to make that more convenient. But um, that but... and the and the bow too. Yes, the bow as well. Um, but I think at, at some point here, relatively soon, one of them is going to have, or both of them will have to decide to make a trip into one of those dungeons. It looks like Zero Nix is actually going to give us that trip to Eastern and uh, Sahasrola's closet. Yeah. And we are getting the world tour over on Lijo's side with the Smith. So in the back of Sahashala's closet we have a piece of heart. Piece of heart. Twenty rupees. Nothing there, but we will see a look into Eastern. Uh, not completable, but we can get up to three items. Right. Ho hopefully all three. Um, we'll have to complete it eventually. So really the big hope here is that we find that we find a bow in front of Eastern. Actually, it looks like Zero Nix is going to head down to the portal and give us our look at Pod first. Right, more items and there's like a, uh, five items in Pod up to five items that we can get in pod. And provided they have a potion, they may, and they know how to do the uh, the trick, they may be able to get around needing the bow to get to the two chests on the right side. Yep. And I believe Xeronix may have picked up a red potion in one of the shops. I'm not, I'm not sure. I saw a red potion purchased on one side. I'm not sure if it was Xeronix for sure. Right. And our men the mentors probably do know how to do I know Koi knows how to do the YBA glitch, so at least they'll be able to walk them through on how to do that. If they Ab need it. Absolutely, yeah. And it's a it's a pretty easy trick. It's just the the positioning can be a little specific. Um, but as long as you've used the potion in the right spot and don't move I think to the right after doing it camera will unlock and you can scroll those mimics off screen so we, yeah with with koi's a mentor we may very well see that here right <laughs> so it is not bow lock we have a key there So the pod key logic is is interesting. You're going to have four or five small keys in the front six, che front six chests. Um, so you can kind of keep track how many keys you found, and that will inform you uh, sort of how to route the dungeon. 
per in right. particular, if you, if you have a good grasp on your key count, you can determine whether the vanilla big key chest is worth checking. So it looks like we are getting a vanilla big key chest check. And just a key for a key. And piece of heart down in the Stalfos basement. are going to see that uh, what we call the the pod camera unlock with the with drinking the potion while moving left in the hallway having a little bit of talk with Xeronix, just telling him exactly how to set it up here. Yep. And meanwhile, Lijo is going into the front part of Escape. getting the pod camera unlocked. All you gotta do is scroll these mimics far enough left, and the game is convinced that they have been killed, and the door will up open up. And there we go. So far, just nothing more than just a bunch of keys in the front. Yep, I believe that is four keys out of uh, the six chests in the front. So we we're going to see uh, two in the back. So when you have a when you have a setup like this, uh, the other the other uh, point of uh, figuring out the logic is whether the harmless hellway has an item in it. And if you find only one key out of the three chests. Uh, from the pot, the rupee basement and the uh, turtle room, I'm sorry, the terrapin room, that's what those things are called, then you know that the hallway has the last key and you can skip it. Yeah. And Zero Next having a little bit... <laughs> Those octopus type uh, creatures are giving Xeronix uh, a little bit of trouble. Yeah, he's trying to get the bomb out there, and the hard hat beetles are being real difficult. That red one is really being a pain, but he finally gets it. It looks like what he was trying to do is there is a uh, is, is get the bomb thrown, and then intentionally fall in the, the hole to get put back to the door with just enough time to get over the block. Managed to pull it off there. Nice dodging around the second helmosaur into the total room. Finding a key, now down into the basement. Two items down here. Shovel. In 10 hours. How do you feel about a fetch quest? Uh, it's it's certainly something. Um, it gives us at least one more, uh, one more check once we're back in the light world, and that's convenient. 
Um, and so again, while since Zero Nix found only one key out of those three, the last key is in the hellway, and he, if he's knowledgeable with the key logic, um, there's no need to check that. And while that was going on, Gilo, Lee Joe, I'm going to butcher that. I apologize. Lee Joe picked up the hook shot in Easter. It was the uh, first chest, the cannibal chest, and... Uh, Xeronix has found our ice rod in the top chest of the pod dark basements. That will be needed for beating up Trinex later. <laughs> Paradox cave check. I like Lijo heading straight up the mountain to this. Oh, there's oh, our boots. There's the boots. Uh, the hook shot. That hook shot was available very early, um, being in that just that front chest of, of Eastern Palace, which means there is a lot of progression that could be gated by it. Um, and we've already seen that is proving true. That is now opened up desert for us. So we got a piece of heart. There's our flute. A full heart container, bombs, and 20 rupees. So we found our, our flute. And I think Xeronix just found the red mail at the uh, dig spot there. Yep. Looks like Leech is going to make the walk over to Tower of Hera, yeah, which again is a crystal dungeon, and with the equipment we have is fully clearable, so this is not a bad time to go ahead and get out of the way, and we also have the Ether Tablet available. So we are getting an Ether Tablet check first, before going into Hera, and for destroying the Ether Tablet we get 50 rupees. sees the piece of heart and just turns right back around and says, nope. Small key in the chest here, which means the big key is locked up in the, in the basement here in its middle, middle location. And it looks like Legion will just go ahead and go for it. You have the option of doing the hair pot trick to skip up to the top, but with the big key down here, that does lock you out of potentially one item. And perhaps you want to just go ahead and guarantee that you can get that. And Xeronix is indeed making their play back into Thieves Town. They'll be able to find the myths in the uh, big chest, completely vanilla location, and that will set them up with a lot more access here. They still need to get over to Eastern to find the hook shot, uh, but I imagine we'll get there in not too long. Thank <laughs> you. 
we have a slight wall in the act, I'd just like to remind you, everyone, uh, that we are watching the Go Mode Podcast's uh, Mentor Tournament. This is week five. Uh, this match is a two and two in our Swiss brackets. And we have one more week coming up after this, which will be the mentor list week. So in weeks one, two, four, and five, um, all of our runners have had mentors with them live during the race to uh, help them get through it with routing and execution. Um, but in weeks three and six, they are then they are asked to run these races without a mentor to prove their skills, see how much they've learned, and see how well they do in the overall brackets. If you're wondering what, if you're wondering what is the Go Mode podcast, um, exclamation point, exclamation point uh, podcast in the chat will get you more information. You can also join our Discord, exclamation point Discord in the chat will get you those respective links. Right, and they do a fine job over there with uh, the podcasts and everything. Yeah, I'm not much of a podcast person myself, but I do really, really like the GoBot podcast. Even even with, with as much rando as I've played, I find myself still learning from it. Uh, the guys that run it are really good at what they do. Uh, we're all honestly a really friendly bunch. Um, come by, come by, check it out, hang out with us in the Discord. We'll uh, we're, we're happy to have you. Right. We're always what a more very friendly uh, community as well. We welcome new players and or we, and do our best to help you out as well if you need uh, if you're stuck anywhere in the game or if you have questions. So there's the um, vanilla mitts in Thieves Town. Is there an Saves him. Bail out. <laughs> yep. Legio with a textbook Moldworm kill. Go ahead and pick up our crystal at the top of Tara here. And did find the pack of bombs in the big chest. So just a couple of useless items and Hera overall. Shocky and chat, our tracker has a good point that there is that Quake medallion on blind. Um, we have not yet seen our medallion requirement for Turtle Rock, so we don't know if that will end up coming back to bite them. Let, let's hope not, fingers crossed. Yeah, and in, in, the, in the interest of uh, keeping this a nice close race without him, them having orphaned a single check that's a key item, we're, we're definitely hoping that is not the medallion for TR. And Legio making their way back up through Paradox Cave. To answer a quick chat question in chat uh, from Jossum Sauce, we have not yet seen a pedestal check. Um, both of our runners were in Skullwoods earlier, but as and already taken care of, as you see, we do not yet have a mirror. So that was not con a convenient check to do. And we are getting a TR check as well. This will be a moment of truth on whether this medallion is useful. A one in three chance. Oh, it no, it is the quake. That could very well be a lot of trouble for Zero Nix. But then again, anything can happen in this. Legio's going to go ahead and open it up while they're there. Uh, no Samaria to even make progress in TR just yet. But that is now open and available. We'll get a good look at Hookshot Cave. There's another bottle. That is all four of our bottles, um, two of which came preloaded with fairies, one with a blue pot, one with a red. Full heart container and ten arrows. And we are getting a check into Super Bunny Cave. And just some love down there in Super Bunny Cave.
Looks like Legio is going to go ahead and give us uh, these boots related checks with uh, King's Tomb and the Bonk Rocks here. We're still waiting on Zero Nix to get up the mountain or find the hook shot in Eastern, the cannonball chest, and get up the mountain to find those boots and the flute. 50 rupees in King's Tomb. Punk rocks, twenty rupees. We just heading up north here. I don't know that we saw a lumberjack check from either of these. No, we did not. So this will be good information here, and we can all we might even see a pedestal check, considering we are in the area. Ooh, that's a sword. sword on the ledge there. That That's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, that's tempered too. That's not strictly required, but tempered sword would be a gigantic upgrade um, for a lot of the later part of this game. But we are good. Uh, now, did uh, Lee Jo turn in the lunchbox at all? I don't believe Lee Jo did purple chess. I think this is the first we're seeing on uh, Zero Nick's side. Wait, uh, there's the flippers. Yeah, definitely hasn't done that, done that yet. So there's our flippers. That's that's going to open up some things, including once we have the mirror, the green pendant swamp palace. immediately putting those flippers to use, going, uh, checking the lake island, seeing that full heart, and going straight to Hobo, who I believe had just like a pack of bombs or something. And Lijo is now getting in the desert with those boots, uh, continuing to gain more time here. That's a good point coming from uh, W. Garrison in chat. The flippers are indeed only strictly required for getting into S Swamp Palace. Uh, they You can easily fake flipper to Ice Palace and to get the, uh, the rest of the water checks. Um, even the Zora Ledge is accessible if you know how to do uh, Splash Deletion. Um, that, that Swamp Palace, if there's something in there that we need to beat the game, for instance, this, uh, Cane of Samaria, then those flippers may be absolutely required. And as the Joe makes the way over to the right side, left side, does it? Our other item on a desert, just a big 20. Um, I'd imagine we'll see them head right to the back and take care of Lamos. Thank you. 
So, with everything going on and, you know, locations running out for our runners to check, where do you think that mirror is going to be hiding? I'm personally banking on Ice Palace. I think with the way the with the way the logical progression is laid out, um, I feel like that's that's like kind of the end of the item chain. There could very well be an Ice Palace with the flippers now logically opening that up, and we could very well find them in there. We haven't yet seen any of our, either of our bows, and Samaria also is still at large. And we are getting a nice polish check over on Zero Nick's side. And Legia with a very quick uh, usage of the fire rod to clean up her lamos. Not a tough fight at all. Looks like on Legio's side, we're going to take a peek at Mire Shed and see what our Mire Medallion requirement is. Um, if it is Quake, that's accessible and there are two items to find. Um, tough to say whether they might dip it. It is Quake indeed. So Quake is our only required medallion. And that is our Samaria, Cana Samaria, in the first chest in Ice Palace. There it is. That is a, the most convenient uh, timing for finding that item, because that immediately lets you set up Icebreaker instead of having to route in the older route with the Ice Palace bomb jump. So while I'd say that Legio probably still has the advantage here, having been up the mountain to find, uh, or having found the, the hook shot to begin with in Eastern, and then up the mountain to find boots and flute, uh, Zeronix does still have an edge in having that Samaria that does give them one less item to worry about, and they'll have uh, they'll have Ice Palace wrapped up in no time here. Right. Zero next doing the trying to get the icebreaker glitch off. Having a little bit of trouble with it. There you go. Slide to the wall. Not not too much trouble to, to get through it. It's a it's a fairly specific trick, but there are a few different setups for it, and it's a matter of finding out finding which one works for you, which one is the most consistent. Our second oh. item in Ice Palace is our first shield. A bit late to find one of those, just over an hour in. Right, and Legio also picked up his first shield over in Meyer. <laughs> there we go, so we got two of them found. So both these runners have one item left to find with each of these dungeons, and... Zero Nix, after finding the item, will proceed down to the boss and take care of Cold Stare. Lijo will most likely uh, most likely bail out after finding our second item in, in Meyer here. Because it's not likely that we'll need the uh, the pendant. Scene chest and decides to go for it.
Since you were doing a nice job of avoiding the fireball, fire bar, and the penguinators. There aren't a whole lot of uh, tricky ice physics rooms in this in this game, but this one is definitely one of the worst. It just seems like it's always always tough to get through this bottom section of it um, with how with how the uh, fire bars rotation is just it's it's a pest. So I think that was. Yeah, that was a small key in the big chest, and I believe we didn't see anything in Ice T. Because we're still checking items, so our last item appears to be on Cold Stair. Looks like Xeronix will have... Looks like a full magic bar. We'll have enough fire rod shots to get rid of the ice. And then we can fight Polestar itself. If you ever find yourself short on magic, as Xeronix did peek into that, that refill room to the right. If you, haven't, if you have an extra key to spend, um, you can peek into that right room and a couple of those pots have magic under them in case you need a little bit more to actually be able to take care of the boss. Looks, and it looks like Xeronix using hammer strats on Cold Stair. Hammer does do tempered sword damage, so it does take fewer hits than the uh, Master Sword. Uh, however, the range is shorter, so you have to be a little more careful with these puffs. But with 10 hearts and red mail, not too worried. Should be okay on this fight. Right. Xeronix taking down two of the three puffs. And, and there we go. That's cold stare down. On Legion's uh, side, we're also going to see the uh, the pod camera unlock trick again here. Right. And Xeronix picking up his tempered sword as well. That is not a bad item to find on cold stare. Which means that, unfortunately, we're probably going to be abandoning the butter sword over in Lumberjack Ledge. Oh yeah, I, I, I can't say there's any chance that we uh, that we see a play all the way through Aghanim just for one more sword, no. No. Xeronix finally getting into uh, making that eastern dip, finding that hook shot, that's going to point them straight at the mountain, and they will be getting their boots and flute, getting them caught up in items with Lijo. Thank <laughs> you. 
Gamachu in chat with the suggestion that there could be a bow in the second chest. That is entirely possible. Um, we have not seen either bow. It is certainly possible that bailing out of Eastern after finding the hookshot in the first chest is the wrong play. Um, we will certainly see that dungeon revisited soon enough as it is a crystal, and we are running low on options. Right. Our next dungeon that's fully completable um, without that bow, um, we're looking at potentially a Turtle Rock play in not too long. We may even see that from uh, from Xeranix here. They are going up the mountain. They're going to get all those items they need shortly here, and they do have the Samaria. Um, however, actually, they do need the Quake still, so... Let me correct myself. They still need to go back to defeat Blind to get that Quake Medallion before TR is an option for them. There, there, there's the boots and the flute. All that mobility item, all the mobility options coming in from Paradox, and that's going to give them most of what they need. picking up their ice rod in the top chest of dark maze one step closer to go mode just need to find that samaria in the ice palace first chest and ice and then wherever one of our bows ends up being Both these runners pretty well off defensively. We've got uh, 11 and 14 hearts, both on red mail. They've got four bottles and plenty of money they can use to uh, to fill potions into those bottles whenever they feel like they need. So Zero next picking up that heart that Lee Joe passed on. Zeranix side, we're going to see a setup for a Heropod here. Um, they will not be missing an item. Again, the, the big chest was just a uh, pack of bombs, so this will be an efficient way to clear the dungeon. Yep. And this is one of those uh, glitches that need to be at least pixel perfect. Taking several pauses to get the buffer. Ooh, and does not quite oh, get the right she thought, movement. She's soft locked himself. So if you hook shot into the pot, but then you don't push left before pushing up, I believe it is, you can, uh, you can soft lock yourself. And without the mirror, that is going to have to be an outright save and quit. Yep. Joe now making this trip into Ice Palace. Going to get that good news that the Samaria is in the first chest. And then we'll do just one bow away from Go Mode.
Go ahead and get their flute activated. Now it looks like Lijo is going to go ahead and do the Ice Palace bomb jump route anyway. Uh, yep. Perhaps they are not as familiar with the um, ice with the icebreaker trick. Yeah, sorry, lost my lost my train of thought right for a second. Ice Palace bomb jump is still it's it's a kind of a classic strat by now with how uh, how much icebreaker really makes this dungeon a. a speedy run, but sometimes you find yourself without Samaria here, so it's still good to have that bomb jump strat in your uh, in your library. having some trouble with this bomb jump here is going to go ahead and uh, take the fairy to get their hearts back so they can have some more chances at it here. Back up the mountain, gonna take another shot at the at the Harapot. There okay. we go, Lijo finally getting it off. Yep, there it is. The positioning can be a little bit tricky, um, depending on uh, how you come into the room and which sword you have, as far as knowing how many pixels away from the bomb you need to be. But they did get that lineup. Finally got it. Pot. They are up on the Moldrum fight now. I'd imagine they are with the Harapot. They didn't find, of course, the, uh, the item in the big chest. They cannot access it. Um, I'd imagine they're committed to skipping that, but hopefully it's not going to weigh on, on their minds while they're still searching for uh, this Quake Medallion. Pretty good Moldorm fight. Not uh, not much bullying happened there. Moldorm just kind of just just letting it happen for the most part. Not being too aggressive. Right. Nice, nice, clean Moldorm Moldorm fight. Yeah, Lido on the other side here. You can see giving us a, a look at that uh that restock room on the right side right before the boss. If you are a little bit low on magic, you can use those pots to make sure you're topped off to start off the cold stair fight. And they're going to use that, uh, oh, didn't quite, big. they're going to try to bag another fairy in a bottle there. Uh, accidentally touched it to collect it. They're going to go ahead and just take the full refill and head down to Cold Stair. Right. Fairies are a little tricky to catch sometimes. They move they move kind of randomly and the hitbox is big enough that it can be easy to just accidentally uh, touch and collect them instead of getting them in the net. Oh, my God. 
good a job with Cold's character. Master Sword does take several, several hits to take down each of these puffs. We've got plenty of health left. We shouldn't have to worry about any uh, untimely deaths here. Chat pointing out earlier that their, their prediction for the seed is that the bow is on the pedestal. And that is entirely possible. Our pendant dungeons have nothing to do as far as uh, requiring the bow for completion. Um, and we have not yet, we still haven't seen a pedestal check from either runner. They've had that book for a long time, um, but lacking the mirror when they did Skull was that check was not convenient. And they just haven't uh, haven't been back to to look for it. it it's it's isolated at this point. It'd be a bit of a chunk of time to actually go look at it. Um, but right. that knowledge may may become the more the more checks they do without finding the bow, um, that more that knowledge may become very important. Quick trip to the potion shop to stock up on a whole lot of blue. And Zeronex going over into the mire area. And Texas is Quake. You're gonna see that bad news that that one's Quake as well, so they do not have those two checks available. If anything, that, that works out in their favor, because they won't have they only have an option of digging into mire to look for the Quake medallion. It's just another another thing that's to rule out for them. Right. When Lee Joe is climbing the mountain, I believe we are gonna see a play into Turtle Rock, which I do like this. The dungeon is completely clearable with the items they have. They're only missing the bow, which TR does not require at all. And there are five items in Turtle Rock and the infamous laser bridge. We all know it loves to have uh, progression locked away on it. So this this va may very well could be the correct play to make. Right. I want... Zeronix is over here cleaning up the Desert Palace. Those are required dungeons, so they are they are quite right to go ahead and di dip in here and just uh, take care of it. Not going to find anything in the way of progression items. Um, they can at least get that one crystal and keep themselves not too far behind. Streamer and Vortex here with a supposition of Mirror and Turtle Rock and then the mirror leading to nothing in progression but having the bow being uh, in Eastern Palace. Uh, with with how many times, with how this seed so far has been fairly well punishing to anyone who's uh, dipped out of a dungeon before getting all of its checks, that would be really, really quite, uh, quite the theme of this seed. Yeah, that's... Personally, I kind of like it. it it's, uh, I, I like, I like cons some consistency in the theme, and uh, we might actually... So, Xeronix is heading into Eastern, so we will 
soon get to see which of these plays is the correct one to make for our bow. There's a big key. item in Eastern being a piece of heart. So if our bow is here, it's in one of these last two locations. And we get the map and uh, the big chest. And another heart piece. So it is not in Eastern. proceeding through the, uh, what I like to call the wire room, that has a more technical name. I'm not aware of it, but we'll work his way through here, and then we will be getting on to the laser bridge, which looking at our, what we have collected so far, appears to have two items on it, uh, maybe three, depending on where the, uh, where the map is. We're going to find a key for sure, and then try next to either have the map or one of the no, last They already items. picked up the map. It was in the big chest. Was it? I think we have a one, uh, or the compass, sorry. I knew we have one dodge item left. It looks like we'll see the uh, safety door open here. Not a bad idea. Um, right. Just lets you respawn here in case you take a death on la with doing the laser bridge checks or Trinex itself. Key in the first chest. All right, there's our compass. All right, so the last two, three items are in these two chests and Trinex. There's uh, a there's bow. There's the bow. <laughs> bow is on laser bridge. And at one hour, 28 minutes, 25 seconds, that puts us into go mode on Lejo's side with a bow on laser bridge. The classic uh, turtle rock holding progression. Right. Grabbing a fairy there, another good safety to have. You got full hearts, you'll have full magic going into Trinex. Should be a pretty uh, routine fight. rock monster here. Pretty easy fight with tempered sword. It takes two rod shots and I think five sword slashes on each side. Yeah, with the, get the uh, If you get the uh, uh, the pattern down, the good rhythm down, you can get to the ice head before it has a chance to freeze into the floor. And then you can charge your sword spin, wait for the phase two to start, get that quick kill if you time it just right. Quite get the perfect setup, but that's still a very good uh, Trinex fight on Legion's side. No issues whatsoever. And down goes Trinex. Uh, 
All right, so that is crystal number five on Lijo's side. Now that they have that bow, they can go straight to cleaning up uh, Palace of Darkness and Eastern, and they'll be back up the mountain once more to head to Ganon's Tower. Right. Now we know the the mirror is not in Eastern Palace. If I was, I think if I was playing this, I'd personally be hoping that it's in uh, that ends up being in Palace of Darkness. I'm not sure if we found all five items in the pot. I think there's one left, maybe potential on Helmosar. Um, I'd, yeah. be hopeful, I'd be hopeful for a mirror in there when cleaning it up, just so I could mirror out to Eastern. But I think it's not terribly likely. So either either way, I don't think you're really have that much of a time difference with which these dungeons you do first. And Zero is heading up to check out uh, Lumberjack here, getting their information that that is their last swords. So that will not be necessary for them. Taking a couple slashes at it. I think you're going a bit too wild with the, uh, the blind pods. I don't want to see any more of them. runners heading towards bosses they can take care of. Uh, Zeronix heading back into the back of desert to uh, take out Lamos and Lijo back at the Eastern Palace knocking out those red eye gores no problem. And let's see if they set up for a nice uh, quick kill on the Armos Knights here. I'm going to take more of a, uh, more of a standard uh, not as quick strat here. Still, still gets the uh, the red. Last night turning red takes a couple extra arrows to take care of, but still a pretty good fight. No issues there. Picks up their six crystal, and they'll be headed straight into Palace of Darkness for the last one. Right. Normally, the best way to take care of this is actually in reverse. Take care of Palace of Darkness, and then just warping over and taking care of Eastern Palace. Indeed it is, but lacking that mirror, we don't exactly have that option. So we'll have to flute back to five and use the portal, get in the dark world, take another walk through the uh, the dark the palace of darkness uh, hedge maze. Zeronix taking in Lamos with the fire rod. It's going to bring them up to four crystals. Let's see where they go from here. They are 
very short on options. Right now, Chad is uh, hoping. Chad's talking about uh, whether they may have uh, mis mistracked or miscounted the items in Thieves Town. If I'm hoping that's not a possibility, it looks like they might be revisiting. Check it out again, and let's let's hope they go straight in and and get to blind and get that quick done. That's really what they need here. Oh, actually, uh, Shockey pointing out, saying they had the stream open, they, they mismarked it. And then Leoria, as noticed that earlier. Um, and But it looks like they are taking a look again at these and They may have realized that an error uh, may have been made here. Um, so they'll get the, uh, the bad news that they skipped the Quake Medallion of Blind a long time ago. Legion making a beeline into the uh, basement of Palace of Darkness. We're going to be getting into the Helmosar fight in short order here. Helmasar, the lag beast. Uh, let's hope he doesn't throw out too many fireballs to make this uh, seed take even longer than it already is. Mask is off, just four tempered slashes will take him down. Not a problematic, not a problematic fight at all. All right, chat, that is our seventh crystal coming off of Helmosar King on Legio's side. And you know what that means. There's a little game we like to play here once we have seven crystals on our way up to Ganon's Tower. Yep. Uh, that, that big key... Um, I'm sorry, you, you, you want to go ahead and explain it? Sure. That big key is in one of 22 chests in Ganon's Tower basement. And get your guesses in. Uh, we will be going off of Legio's side. And... But I'll ask you this, and I do this as well with anyone else I commentate as well with. In which one of the 22 chests do you think the big key is in? Uh, since my normal number 18 got sniped out pretty quick, I'm going to go ahead and go with number 8. Actually, I see my I see 8 also got grabbed. Uh, let me find a different number. It hasn't been grabbed. I'm going to go with... Looks like I'm going to take five. I don't think five has been grabbed yet. Nope, Garrison just grabbed five. <laughs> Hold on. We're being sniped here. I think 14 is the first, I'm the first one to grab 14, it looks like. No, 14 is grabbed twice, actually. About 15. All right. The All right, 15, got my number. We're good. <laughs> I'm going to say Tyler Room. Go for the 22. I mean, I don't, I don't blame you. We, we had one yesterday. Right, I saw that. Amareth so kindly rolling us a, uh, a tile room Ganon's Tower big key, which did end up being uh, number 22 on the side of the winners. I believe actually the other side there, as they were f cleaning up, did an early tile room and found that a bit quicker. But I, I uh, also forget exactly who, which side was which in that race. Just one, 10 bombs. Chest number two! 
Hope Rim with the early big key, number two. That's That'll do it. Still need to find a small key to take up the uh, the climb here, but that's as late as the pot key over here. That'll be a very quick get us to our pick up some extra arrows there. Good, good actually uh, look at their arrow count, noticing they're a little bit low. Give themselves some additional security getting up the climb. And congratulations to the dude Garcia for hitting number two on the nose. 16 points on the Gomo Podcast GTBK leaderboard. Yep. And we thank you all for playing. <laughs> So now Lijo making their way up the tower into the first of two Mimic. Using the grab onto the wall to manipulate those Mimics into a good position where you can take them out with arrows. These terms are be a, can be a bit tricky if you don't know just how to manipulate them. Uh, definitely worth getting a consistent uh, practice method down. Let's say they handled it no problem. Right. Meanwhile, on Zeronix's side, they are indeed getting into Turtle Rock. Uh, it's going to be a bit before they get down there and find that bow, but they are on the right track. And we do get to see a so we will get to see a serverless Ganon fight. Yeah, assuming that we don't have the silvers in one of the top four chests in Ganon's tower, and if it is that it doesn't get picked up by these runners, we will indeed have a tempered sword silverless, which isn't isn't too bad. It's a, still a right. decently manageable fight, especially with all the uh, defensive equipment we have available. Right, not as bad as uh, Silverless Master Sword Ganon. Oh no, definitely not. That the upgrade to Tempered Sword is is very very big, particularly for Ganon, because it means it takes half the hits, and they don't even have to be all spins for Tempered Sword like it would with Master Sword. Right, Legio getting the anti fairy turned back in the Bunny Bean fairy turned back into a normal fairy. And a nice spin strat on Landmall 2. Yeah, pick, but, uh, powdering the Bunny Beam does does uh, make the Landmall 2 RNG unpredictable, but they did get that the simultaneous pop out of all three and got a nice tempered spin between all of them. That's uh, not something you see very often. Nice work in the Wizrobe 1 room. Just missed the last one in Wizrobe 2, but still not too bad. Part of the good uh, fast cycle on the fire bar room didn't quite make it get the uh, the second uh, dodge around it, but at least part. Of it. And, and picks up the full magic refill. Just, just in case, yeah. There are there are two good uh, there are a couple good magic refill spots on the way up here. On the last one, right before uh, Moldorm 2, of course. Let's see if we get these chests checked in case they're hoping for silvers. Yeah, it looks like it. Yep, piece of heart, a full heart container and 20 rupees. So here's the question Could it be in the very last chest of the game? I hope so. I've seen silvers there a couple times, and it's always a. It's, it's a real laugh when it happens, and I, I honestly do hope we get something like that. 
Wu oh. passes up on the other on the chest right before Maldorn. Deciding that one's not worth the time to check. All right. Give the easy two hits, one slash, one spin. I'll take out Maldorn too. And just a heart piece for our validation chest. No such luck on there. But it'd be a real kicker if the uh, if the silvers were in that third chest. Definitely. But that is something we will never know. Well, Zero next in laser bridge doing a good job with these laser skips. There's their bow, putting them officially into go mode at one hour forty six. They are. Zooming back straight to Trinex. The Agony 2 fight getting uh, some relatively tricky patterns. This fight is very chaotic very quickly, depending on what the, the triple wizard decides to do. Down goes Aga, and we are on our way to fight the big pig. Gannon's been saying a lot of that same quote lately. For me lately, he's either been he's usually been talking about the uh, the bugs. Either that, or uh, he's been pulling off the, the classic uh, spicy barbacoa for me every now and then. Uh, I had uh, recently the one where he was talking about the biggest piece of cheese. And the quote from Spaceballs. Oh, yeah, the Spaceballs one is pretty good. Yes. Alright, so Lee just got enough hits to put us into phase three here. Now, for those okay. of you who are new to Randomizer and you get to this point here with Ganon, little uh, tri tip here. Guinan will always go from top to bottom. He will never go left to right. And we did get our silver sandwich. They are in uh, Swamp Palace. So the green pendant swamp, which always had, never really had any potential because we never found the mirror, um, has our other bow locked away. So we were, we were basically never seeing that. Right. We are on to phase four here, um, which without the silvers means we are doing a silverless fight, which means you have to hit that narrow timing window between uh, after Ganon throws the fire bat and right before he teleports. There's a very short window of time you'll see he raises his arms and then he teleports, and when his arms are up, that is when he is vulnerable to a silverless hit. Sword spins make it pretty easy because the sword hitbox lasts long enough that you can hit that timing window pretty consistently. Right, and it takes 12 with the Tempered Sword. Yeah, it's a great thing that that, that Tempered Sword was given to them by uh, uh, Cold Stare. Because uh, Master Sword Silverless requires like 24 of them. Yeah. And then, yeah. and even that before that, you still have to get through uh, Phase 2, which still requires spins, because the Master Sword is only does damage if you spin. So much for it being called the Master Sword then, right? Yeah, the Sword of Evil's Bane is not very good at slaying evil in this game, it turns out. But that goes Ganon over on Leisure's side. Get your GGs in. 
Just has to make it across the Bridge of Perils, and then we will have our winner of today's race. At least the good thing is he doesn't have to answer three questions. And that is Lijo finishing this race in first place with an official race time dot GG time of one hour, 50 minutes and 10 seconds. GG Lijo. Yep. And we'll see if uh, Lee Joe wants to uh, join us to be uh, interviewed. Yeah, as soon as we can get them up here in the in the room, we will have an interview. Um, in the meantime, we will keep a watch on Zero Nix. They have Palace of Darkness to work through here, and then they'll be on the way up. And we are joined by Lijo and Walter the Fourth in our interview room here. GG, what a good race! Yep, hey, cheers, Joe. So, opening up here. Feelings. What 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 do you think? How'd this seed uh what do you like and dislike? <laughs> I gotta say that I think I don't know how Zero Nix went, but I think for us it was key to go into the back of Thieves Town and get those vanilla mitts. Yes, so Thieves Town was quite the contentious point there. They they made three trips into Thieves Town, unfortunately. Um, yeah. they, did the, they did the first trip where it was just the one item up top, which I believe was just a big 20. Um, the second trip, they did everything but blind, and we believe that was due to miscounting the items in, uh. in, in the dungeon. And then eventually they made a third trip back in, suspecting an error, and finally found that, uh, that Quake Medallion. Uh, that sucks. Yeah, I think I grabbed blind before I grabbed the big chest and I think had I not grabbed blind then maybe I would have saved and quit out of there so maybe a little bit of luck there perhaps yeah it is indeed it's a great thing you went and full quit that dungeon because that was really kind of a one of the big sticking points yeah 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 I think even if we went big chest first we still would have continued because there was like we're almost at the end of the dungeon at that point and there were still two items left yeah, was it which which was it the green was it the green pendant as well, Thieves Town? No, it was the, no, it was the uh, red pendant. Red pendant, okay. Yep, yeah, swamp was our green and never found the mirror, so that never e was never even an option. Who knows where that mirror was? Yeah, probably think, deep in Gannon's Tower. <laughs> I think also not doing early desert palace as well was a good play because it was uh, boots locked and the boots were up on the mountain. Yeah, you finding uh, you also did find the hook shot significantly earlier. Uh, you were the first ones to make the look into Eastern Palace, um, and then you went straight up the mountain. I was very glad to see that mountain play immediately because that definitely opened up the progression a lot and gave you such an advantage for the rest of the race. Yeah, I think it was kind of like hook shot seven quit maybe. Yes, definitely. So it was good play. Yeah, especially since Eastern turned out to have just a, heart, a couple of heart pieces for its other two items. Yeah, we just go moded it in the end, so it was quite good. Yeah, we did a little bit of a, a miss in in Ice Palace because, um, like, we got the cane in the first chest, and it kind of kind of clicked for us a little bit too late that we could have done Icebreaker as soon as we got that cane. 
Oh, okay. I was, we were wondering if maybe you just weren't quite familiar, as familiar with the icebreaker trick and decided to go with the, the, the bomb jump route. Yeah, that's why my Ice Palace bomb jump was so poor, because I don't, like, I think a lot of runners, I don't do that very often now, so. Yeah, it's still good, still good to have that in the pocket for when it does occasionally come up. <laughs> yep. My, my first, uh, one of the very few glitches that I learned first off. Yeah, it's definitely one of the new hot things. I was definitely surprised when, like, I came into the mentor tourney and, like, every new runner, new icebreaker and diver down. But it makes sense because, like, the, the new hot thing and especially icebreaker is such a good time save. Yeah, um, that and uh, Heropod. What my big kind of surprise was when I was getting into this and seeing so many of e the mentor tournament racers um, so many people are employing Heropod, and I'm like, this seems like a trick that just very recently came onto the scene, but everyone's already doing it. I'm like, well, I guess I guess I got to do it too, right? Yeah, I still haven't learned that one, as you probably saw. Yeah, I mean, there are so many setups for it. I think it's, uh, and it, they're awfully specific. I think it does take a good amount of practice to really get consistent. Every time I do it, I end up just like l watching Koi's video in the middle of my, in the middle of my seat and be like, all right, how do I do this again? Yeah, I think that's uh, like uh, one of the problems, not quite video, but that there's so many uh, setups that there's like not a single streamlined setup for everyone to use. So like uh, it makes it a little bit harder to use. pick it up when, you, when you're when you watching a restream because everyone is doing it in a different way. Exactly, yeah. Uh, and Xeronix does make the ch look in the hope room first, finds the big key in chest two, do the same thing, go grab that pot key and head straight up. Yep. But yeah, it was an interesting race. Um, I'm gonna have to to dip out though, because I have another mentor race and that starts in ten minutes. Sure thing. Uh, thanks for joining us here again, GG. Um, yep, and good luck. We'll uh, see you around for another one. Yep. 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 Good luck to you in your next race. Thank you. So, Legio, how are you feeling uh, coming up with uh, week six, the next uh, mentorless week coming up? Um, okay, I think I, I think Walther made a good. I think in this race, his suggestion to go into the back of these town was key, and I think normally I wouldn't have done that because it being a pendant. So I think in the future I'll probably think more about that because we hadn't had much progression up until then. I mean, we we had we could have dipped pod early, um, but we didn't have a bow. Eastern we couldn't do, so I think that was kind of the the key play. Um, I'm. Feeling okay. I, I was a bit unlucky in my first two races. First one came down to GT routing. Mm -hmm. Second one, it was like six seconds or something. So, yeah, feeling okay. Good. And yeah, you're totally right that the uh, the early Thieves Town. I mean, looking at now being able to kind of study this uh, the seeds logic and how it went. We had such early Dark World access that the logic could very well have expected you to just go straight to Thieves Town and get the Quake Medallion and then be like, oh look, Turbo Rock's accessible once you find uh, Samaria. Um, and then of course knowing where that bow was to unlock the other two dungeons. So it's, mm -hmm. it just I was very glad, personally, when you when you made the, uh, the full Thieves Town dive to clean it up, because it just, it seemed like it was going to be in there. Mm -hmm. Chat wanted to see the uh, bow on the pedestal. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of a pedestal check because we got the book so early. So, but yeah, no, we never saw that, and I wasn't paying attention to the credits to see what was actually on that. So we we missed it on your side there. Mm -hmm. I wonder if anyone in chat noticed what the uh, credits message for the pedestal said for us.
Oh, it was a piece of art. Okay. Thank you, chat. Appreciate it. Zeronix checking one of the chests there um, in the mini Helmosar room. We might see if we get the third chest check here. We didn't see those silver arrows. We were kind of thinking, what if they were in the third chest here? Nope, gonna skip it. We will never know. Actually, no, no, we know the sw this silvers were in the uh, in Swap Palace, my bad. But they don't know that yet. Getting Boldy a little bit by uh, Moldorm 2 here. Round through with Moldorm. Let's see if we can get him down this time. One dash, one spin. That'll do it just fine. Not going to check the validation chest and get that uh, piece of heart there. That's understandable. Want to just go ahead and get up the tower and get it done. Tagging him two down for zero Nix. Just have one more boss to deal with, and that'll be game. We're seeing our uh, Ganon fight here being there on Zero Nick's side. Just want to go ahead and give out a reminder. Uh, shout outs to our commentators, myself, Adelor, and Yoko. We've got our tracker, Shaki, our restreamer, Vortex of Doom. Um, give all these people a follow. Thank you for putting on a uh, great show, keeping the keeping the stream running for us, Make sure we're all, all looking good and sounding good. Um, and then, of course, give our runners a follow and their mentors. We've got Zero Nix and Lejo, Koi, Wall Third, Fourth. All their links are in the in the chat right there. Give them all a follow. We all we appreciate them for being here and put on this race for us and just for participating in the tournament in general. Here next now and again in phase three. We are not too far away from having the fight completed. Okay. 
gets the torch glitch to start off phase four. Just needs 12 of these tempered sword spins. Yep. And after that, we get pork chops. We have just two hits to go, if my count is correct. Yep. Nope, one. Yep. Down he goes. There it is. All right, GG to Zero Nix. We'll cross the bridge, get into the Triforce room, and we'll have a time in just a moment here. And that is the game. We have Xeronix finishing with an official race time dot GG time of two hours, six minutes, and 46 seconds. And we'll see in a moment whether they'd like to come up for a quick interview with us here. Right. And while waiting on that, we should mention coming up at 4 p.m. in just a half hour from now, we got a, another uh, mentor race going on. So don't go anywhere because we got more randomizer coming up all day today. We got one at four o'clock, and I believe we have another race at nine o'clock. Yep, the last race of the day will be at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, and uh, that'll be one I'm actually mentoring in. Yep, and the one coming up in just a half hour from now will be Thornto with their mentor, Worldwide Wimpy versus Grim Legend. And their mentor, Shireen. So stay tuned for that in just a half hour from now. And we do have Zero Nix in the room with us here. GG's. Thank you, GG. GG, Zero Nix. Uh, question for you. Uh, your thoughts on the seed? Uh, we need to count better. Yeah, we heard from the chat that there was a miscount on the number of items collected in Thieves Town. There sure was. Um, I think I got distracted by a compass, thinking it was uh, an item. And Koi, unfortunately looked away at that moment so uh just big old goofed yeah that's uh that unfortunate considering we had that one key item in the back of thieves tunnel one yeah. oh yeah that was important that's for sure other than that um i mean i picked koi because he makes some sometimes obscure plays that sometimes pay off and it was just a a good option to have i mean he made a lot of decisions that I, I wouldn't have. I usually play pretty conservative, so at the very least, I have a lot of good frame of reference into some different decision-making. Yeah, definitely. Um, I I would think uh, out of this race, particularly the one, there was one thing that you definitely did first that gave you a, a bit of a, an advantage in a specific item, and that was making uh, a relatively early play into Ice Palace. 
Um, you, were the, you were the first okay. to find the, the Samaria. Of course, okay. Samaria being an ice palace. Yeah. As it oh, yeah. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, I mean, we made, we made the play early to uh, Catfish and the ledge and got both our fire sources. So um, once we were kind of figured out what we can do, unfortunately, that was after already leaving Thieves Town the first time. We just like, yeah, let's, let's go to ice. Yeah, and that uh, by itself didn't open up too much, but at least it was one less item you didn't have to hunt for. Yeah, it's a good thing it was on the top of ice. You could at least pull off the uh, the immediate icebreaker. Right, we were just talking. We had been talking about um, good on the first bomb jump, but then we were talking about routing that in and, and doing the the one in the freezer room. And I was giving some hesitancy to give it a shot, and then we found the cane. Like, all right, we're doing a we're gonna do icebreaker. And now it's easy. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, were you at all scared that, it, that there may have been anything uh, critical on the pedestal at any point? Uh, it came up, came up a little bit earlier um, while we were still looking for a lot of items, but then as we were looking for a lot of late game items and knowing that Meyer was a pendant, it kind of just get put get kept getting pushed back. Um, I did skip on the one opportunity to check Umberjack Ledge. That would have been a nice routing opportunity. So unfortunately, when we were running out of things to do, uh, we had to make the separate trip up to check the Lumberjack Ledge. But that was actually kinda... uh, uh, Leisure did the same thing too. The, both of you decided not to do the early glimpse at okay. Lumberjack, so it was uh, not until much later that we got that information. Gotcha. Yeah, I think we rooted it in when we did the bunk rocks. Okay. Yeah, that's when I was going to, and then I went one screen over. I was like, all right, we're already past it. So I'll ask you the same question, uh, Zero Nix. How are you? How are you feeling now? Now that we're out of out of week five, going into week six, which will be the open mentorless week. Um, feeling pretty good. Um, I have a lot of information from all the previous mentors. A lot of just homework to work on. Um, some execution in terms of navigation through some of the overworld areas definitely came up today, and um, I think some jitters were a factor in that. But feeling pretty good. I think we'll. Uh, like I said, I have a lot to work on until then, but feeling confident. Good, good. And yeah, I mean, in general, I've been seeing a good deal of improvement, um, even in just like the first half when we had the first two weeks of Ambrosia, then the third week was mentorless. Like, even then, you see there was a lot of runners that just had significant improvements, and you can tell that they learned, they've learned a lot um, from their mentors and been putting in good practice. So it's been it's been really fantastic to see uh, all the all the uh, skill progression that's been made throughout this tournament so far. Oh yeah, 100%. I've, I've PB'd twice so far in the tournament, so it's... Nice. That's already been pretty significant improvements. Well, very cool. Glad to hear that it's and going so well for you. On that. And uh, congrats on the, uh, on the PB. Thank you. Obviously not this one, but <laughs> there were some other ones. Yeah, the C was a... Uh... A bit, a bit of a uh, twisty thing. Yeah. Happens, though. Can't make all the right decisions. Nope. Rando is rando. And you... Unless unless you uh, somehow have clairvoyance over the how the seat is laid it out, you're never going to make all the perfect plays. Right. Right. It's so weird that that was only a 144 out of 216 collection rate. Yeah, the check rate was really quite uh, quite low considering everything that had to be done here. But yeah. uh, I think a very quick GT helped out with that and not having to dip into a uh, uh, pendant swap was the other big one. Right. Yeah. But I think that's gonna about wrap it up i don't think i have any further questions um yoko do you have anything else you'd like to ask these two nope 
Any uh, any final thoughts from either of our runners today? Not really. GGs. Yeah, GGs. And good luck to you both in the next round. Thank you. And like we said, stay tuned because in less than 20 minutes, we got another race coming up. So you don't want to miss it. And like I mentioned before, as we're wrapping up here, uh, check out if you want to join us on Discord and join in, get into our community. Uh, we have a lot of fun. There's a lot of learning to be done. Uh, we do uh, casual races every now and then. Um, links in the chat there and check out the podcast as well. Uh, give it a listen. See if you like it. Like, even if you're not a big podcast person like myself, um, you might still be able to find some stuff to take away from it and learn a thing or two yourself. Right. It, the podcast is every other Wednesday and they do release a seat to go along with the topic that they do talk about in the podcast as well. Indeed. Uh, that's another reason to uh, join up in the discord. If you want to run what they call the uh, bi-weekly seeds, um, once you've run yours, you can submit your time on the leaderboard and uh, join up in the, the secret channel that gets created for it to talk about it, the spoiler channel. Um, and you can discuss how routing went with the other people and uh, see where you might have done better. So I think that's going to do about it. Do it for us here. We got to get ready. Gotta get ready for the next race. So until then, I'm Yoko. I've been Adelor. And we'll see you next time for more Link to the Past Randomizer right here on the Go Mode Podcast. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.